letters to this very day go to the same people. Same people, same. It, it's not spread across. A person can get a 150 million tender today. They come back next week to look for another 300, 300 million tender, and they get it. To what extent are we ready as the state to, to, to deal with the issue of, of greed and the transformation of, of our economic system? Because if, if these are not changed, we are not going anywhere. The question of the, 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 the tender system um, that is why in government today we have basically, um, President, uh, said that there must be full investigation with regard to supply chain and the tendering process, right? And those people who want to short circuit processes use their influence, including their husbands and their boyfriends and their wives, make them benefit in the system. That is nepotism. We must not be dilly dally about it. We must condemn it and, where necessary, take measures to squash it. Finish and clear, so that we say these hands are clean, uh, finish and clear, and so on. <laughs> so the fact of the matter is that I'm saying that it is important that we must basically deal with this issue also from a point of view of political will um, and at the same time impose that uh, on our on our cadership. Isn't the issue here the fact that the politician who represents the people voted into power by the people, um, is so detached from the reality of the people. When I talk about wealth exhibition, it goes back to the question of revolutionary morality and the question of values. The value system that we embrace is the one of hard work and honesty to ensure that what we acquire, it is out of hard work and out of uh, uh, honest uh, means uh, within society. And it is, there is everything wrong for a person who calls himself a revolutionary to basically display what is called wealth exhibition. Because uh, it does not only serve a message, the wrong message to our people, but it begins to say that um, uh, um, what kind of a revolutionary person you are in the society that we actually live in. How do we create leadership for the future that we can trust in? Leadership is not static. I mean, it's a question that um, uh, we've got to be firm in terms of broader society and own up to this thing. That's why I think uh, most of the people think that um, the ANC or some people in the ANC are opposed to what Kosatu says. I'm, I'm making an example because Kosatu has been, let me say, providing leadership on the question of corruption by being vocal and leading and all of that. One of the things that uh, we won't agree with is the fact that uh, Corruption in the main comes from leaders of the NC, and um, it is leaders of the NC who are corrupt without any share of evidence that people can actually give. But a blanket accusation is actually made, and it stays with us and, and all of that. Why is the NC, for instance, opposed to lifestyle audits? Because clearly, because I was saying, look, let us have those wealthy ones explain where they got their wealth. There, there is. That should be an easy thing to do. The NC has never been opposed to lifestyle audits as an organization. The question is posed from Kosatu's point of view, which they must articulate what is lifestyle audit. Lifestyle audit is it the Star newspaper? That you no no no. I'm I'm, I'm 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 saying that it is the Star newspaper because they Kosatu themselves have, have failed to define that in practice. What do they mean? Because except Vavi opening his wardrobe and saying that he's got three suits and few takeys and many t-shirts of Corsado. And then uh, that is lifestyle audit. <laughs> lifestyle audit is about what you have in the bank, whether it is fraudulent and whether you live beyond your means. Yeah. And if you live beyond your means, the state and the law must actually find you in terms of the tax and all of that. But it does not end there. It means that our own systems in terms of the democratic state must actually speak to that. That's why the ANC took steps further to say that including its employees and members, to an extent that we even proposed integrity committees and all of that, these mechanisms, is because we say that let us all live within our means. And those who live beyond and they can't account for their wealth, let them face the full wrath of the law. That's lifestyle audit. Thank you.